it's time now to do the intermediate uh, gear. We've already got a new shaft there and I've put in a crush sleeve in at the moment to do this experiment because what I've got here is the brand new gear set. What we're going to do is put it in this little jig here that JP knocked up for me which will it's got the, th the same thickness here, wait a minute it was a bit heavy <laughs> it, this has got the same thickness as the gearbox and it's got the locking eye on here so if we get a new nut here and progressively tighten that down oh, that's a bit tight Hmm. Wait a minute. I had to put put a cover over here so you didn't see all my gear. Top secret. Nah, that really. It's just looked a bit of a mess. So we'll wind this down a bit. Now I am going to have JP knock me up some solid tubes for this, but I wanted you just to see how it uh, how it works. So that's the bearings on there. They're really noisy because they're loose. So we'll put a bit of oil in them. And you can see now when that uh, nut is just snugged up there. There. Don't worry about it sounding noisy because it's all over the place. But that's how much we have to compress. Now we're going to use a big bar on this and see if it works. Now this I've never done this before, so this is the first time. Nope. <laughs> no. But when it goes, it goes quickly. Keep trying it. I'll go back down here. See what I mean? It's getting low. It's getting tighter and tighter on that crush. See? Oh, it's almost gone. Look. A bit there. Still a little bit. And you can see how much I'm pulling on that bar. And that is it. As you can see, it's quietened down now. Now we have to put preload on that. We have to put a preload on that. So what I'm thinking of, what I'm thinking, this works great. This works better than I actually thought. So what we can do now, we can take the, oh, that's right, that's right. That's why, that's why I made it like this. So we've got that initially set up, correct? So what we're gonna do now is gonna take this out and measure the crush sleeve and then we'll give we'll go up to JP's this afternoon what time is it now? it is this afternoon already we'll go up this afternoon and we'll get him to make a bush for this and we can take our uh, setup here down to his shop clamp it in his vise and he can we can then just work out just that little bit of preload because that is that is nice but there's no preload on it that's that's just as it should be, but no preload. So what we're going to do is make it probably uh, 0 0.05, a little bit shorter. Now doing it this way is a bit more interesting than doing it in the 
box itself because we can keep control of it because the, the Land Rover way of setting it up was really sort of bizarre uh, you had to put string around the shaft and pull it on the tension whereas this way we can actually set it and forget it right let's see what it's like when the bushing's made right I didn't get back from JP's until late last night so this is Saturday morning um, if you can remember from the last bit, we put this uh, intermediate gear on my little jig here so we can set the tension up on the vise. But what I did was I just tensioned it so that the crushed tube, these things here, would be crushed enough to take up the slack. Now one of the interesting things was this. When we took the tube out, you can see how it's deformed. Now I just put a little marker on there to show you which side is which. But as if I turn it round, you'll see it's not even. And if I turn it this way, can you see there's a lip on here? Yeah, that's right, there's a lip on there. Now, what's going on? So let's use this camera here and we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll take some measurements of this uh, particular unit turn it on I'll turn it to inches wait a second to millimeters I mean see so if I go to where my mark is here and I measure across I'll just yeah that's zero that's good this is 59.34 59.34 on the black mark 60.11 on the other so this means that this tube isn't crushing square it's cooking it's crushing cockeyed and this this caused me and JP a few headaches as to work out why so let me just get a shaft a typical shaft that we see when we take LT230s to bits you can see the wear on here can you see where that bearing's been turning on that shaft? So JP and I came to the conclusion a while ago that when the bearings are when this tube's collapsing, it's kicking a little bit cockeyed because it's a bit loose on here and it hasn't got much of a surface area to go on the bearing. I should have got, should have got one out, shouldn't I? Yeah. So it hasn't got much of a surface area. Oh, this way, sorry. <laughs> hasn't got much of a surface area to go on the bearing here so what how tight are the bearings on the shaft they're pretty good so why is it tipping why is it crushing unevenly well that's hard to say isn't it nobody knows but we see this quite quite a lot this here and if I try and measure it up let's see if i can measure it because there is a step on here happy mondays 24.96 oh, wait a minute let's get this right 25.05 24.96 so there is a step and it's wearing out these pins that's probably why they do the heavy duty ones so what we did was we worked off the height of this bush here but made it a few thousandths of an inch taller we set this device up here in the vice of, of JP's shop and then we progressively took it down in the lathe the bush down in the lathe until we got this uh, back to where it should be you know like free play there was no free play we put the dial indicator on it we did everything to it and uh, just checked it out and then we took a little bit more off we took half a thousandth of an inch off so we had it set so there was no free play well we have to do thousandths of an inch because that's all jp's got on his lathe but we took half a thousandth of an inch off and we found out it increased the torque uh, the the um 
the tension on the bearings. And it did it in such a way that it just got it right. And JP said, oh, no, we, we don't want to put any more than that. So now let's test it because I've got a string round here. And I've got the old string, the old, the old balance out. Let me see. Put that under there. Right, so I've, I've just put the string in the middle bit here. And we'll pull the balance. And we've got around about... It, it, it varies. It's, it's difficult to say. It's, it's around one kilogram. It's around one kilogram. We can do it a couple of times. So it's got preload on this now. Instead of being like free willy. Well, it, 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 it jumps a little bit because it's on the string. But maximum's one kilo. And I think that's all we need. Because really, when we, when we look at it, that is just nice. You know, like I say, we, we had this in the vice, and this was a brilliant piece of kit here, this little thing here that we made. Because now we can do it outside of the transfer box and get a really good feel for this and do the, the bushes customs. So what do our bushes look like? <laughs> well, we've gone heavy duty. See? See the thickness? See, this won't crush, but it's a selectable bush, apparently from Land Rover. But it works out at a parallel 58.79. Yeah, 58.79 is this one. Now, I was thinking, I'm going to do all my transfer cases like this now, from now on. I'm never going to use them crushed leaves again, they're bloody hopeless. I was thinking about making some up because they are they're about 17 quid each for a tube then i thought to myself i could get a load of these knocked up on the cnc machine at but maybe 60 60 millimeters which is oversized and then you could turn them down but not everybody's got access to a lathe and that sort of put me off a bit i really don't know but then again i was thinking about getting james to actually do a drawing of this and our little setup here so you could make your own little setup and work out and have, have the same experience as me using a solid bush now i'm sure if you were handy dandy with a file you could soon file a millimeter or so off there and if you've got a little caliper or a vernier or gauge you could you could soon make sure that this is going to be parallel if you keep one side uh, original like it's been turned and then just file machine grind it off or whatever you know you use i know you shouldn't use the side of the grinder but you could put that on the side of the grinder and just take a little hair off put it back in the gauge and make in in this little setup here and then make sure everything's going to be all right i don't know we'll see about that if there's if there, if there's any uh, questions or anything like that let me know but i'll tell you something i'm more than happy with that now this is the funniest thing this bush is out of obviously the second set of gears that we've got to do the second set we had to take a thousandth of an inch off uh to get that same tension it, it, and and one of the complicated parts about this is if you've got if you're trying to do this in the transmission itself in the in the transfer case if you're trying to do it in the transfer case you've got preload on your diff you've got preload on your uh, input gear how are you going to work out the preload on this i know it says increase the uh, the nut tighten the nut up to crush the tube so the the uh, the preload on the well the the, the string balance increases a little bit what a mess about isn't it better to do each one individually i would have thought so but anyway that's me that's my thoughts but like i say the pins they're nicely machined and the, the bearings won't allow much of a rock so there's something going on and there must have been something going on because land rover changed you know changed it to uh, solid bushes like i say 
at 17, 17 pounds a pop, they are kind of expensive. And there's such a range of incremental sizes that it's going to cost a fortune to get them done. So perhaps that's why uh, Ashcroft's and whatever you keep with the crush tube. Maybe. I don't know. But one other thought that we had. If this crush tube isn't pulling parallel, whoops, what up there? If this push tube isn't, this crush tube isn't pulling parallel, and when the bearings wear, is this coming loose and allowing the bearings to turn on the shaft like this? If so, and this is another thing we thought about. This could be one of the primary reasons why the casing wears, the aluminium casing wears, and we have to put steel bushes in. Because if you can imagine this banging about in the casing, it, there's an awful lot of weight in this. In fact, I tell you what, let me weigh it and see how much it actually weighs. Here we are with the Weigh-O-Matic 2000. Turn it on. I've got the gear here. Oh, you can see better than that with the camera. So here we go. That weighs six and a half kilos. Wow. Or, in old money, four, 13 and a half pounds. Now you can imagine that whirring around at a hell of a rate of knots. It's going to be a hell of a lot of weight moving around in that box. So that might be it. That might be our answer. Now, I'm going to put, fit this now into this transfer case because I'm, I'm well happy with it now. And that We can sort of box this transfer case up and that's one done. And then we'll concentrate on the other one. But I really wanted to show you that and make sure that you've understood what goes on. And why those tubes are not very good, those crushed tubes. See you later.